I'm returning to Morrowind, but not in the same way as before. I will be re-experiencing Morrowind by way of old-fashioned tabletop role-playing, dice rolls, and imagination. I'll have everything I need with my favorite GM tools, emulators, generators, and of course my recollection of this masterpiece of a game itself. I will be tackling every quest that makes sense for my character in a matter that best represents my character and anything that takes me off the rails will be purely RNG and, and solely determined by the mythic GM emulator. Meaning, I'll be able to experience aspects of Morrowind that I never have before. And with permadeath on, I will be approaching this as strategic as possible and as realistic as possible. Fully immersed in my favorite game of all time, Elder Scrolls Morrowind. This is Elder Scrolls Morrowind Recall. Yes, we've been expecting you. Uh, you'll have to be recorded before you're officially released. There are a few ways we can do this, and the choice is yours. So I'm not the Nerevarain or anything. I'm the person that, we'll say, was also maybe got off the boat before the Nerevarain. Maybe I'm behind the Nerevarain. I was one of the people that got off that boat with him and Juib. Him or her and Juib. And I'm thinking for my character, I'm going Red Guard. I'm sitting here, I'm looking at Red Guard stats, and I remember that I always liked Red I always liked the Red Guards because they had Long Blade plus 15 and, and Morrowind, Long Blade, all the Long Blades were cool. I was really bit back then I was really into giant swords. And all the long blades in this game were giant swords. Especially the die katana and i remember seeing a loading screen i think it was this one that they have right here let me see this guy the loading screen this is one of the loading screens you had the black dude in the black armor with the one pauldron with the arm out <laughs> he got the old he got the shoulder out look at that i always thought that was cool never was never a fan of the haircut but because I'm playing with the most with the ultimate mod of all time, my brain, my imagination, I get to have any hair I want. So I don't gotta worry about that. But he had this, I think this is a Daedric longsword, the one-handed one. And you know that I believe he's thrusting right here. This is a thrust. And he just took a picture while he was about to thrust. Uh, because that battle, that pose is dope. But anyway, I think I'm gonna go Red Guard. They get long blade plus athletics they had axe blunt weapon heavy armor medium armor short blade those are the skill bonuses that they get so i, I think i'm gonna go with uh i think i'm gonna go with red guard red guards are certainly the most aggressive combat race you'll find in morrowind I beg to differ. Maybe there just wasn't that many in the game that I recall. I remember the Nords and the Orcs being the worst because they always had those two axes, the two-handed axe and the two-handed sword. And remember when you were cheating, you were using a code that restores your health. <laughs> but whenever you encountered someone with a two-handed hammer or axe, or usually a hammer or axe, you couldn't do anything about it if you were cheating or not because they did so much damage that it, it either did all of your health, it probably destroyed all of your health, uh, or it knocks you down and then they hit you again with the critical which was definitely all of your health sometimes they would do the double tap bap bap like man how did you even swing that weapon that fast what is your strength bap 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 and just mess you up 
they were the scariest. Not no, I don't remember seeing any red guards, honestly, now that I think about it. I don't remember seeing that many red guards in this game, so I'm definitely going to be a red guard. On a clear day, you chance upon a strange animal, its leg trapped in a hunter's claw snare. Judging from the bleeding, it will not survive long. What do you do? I'm not going to interfere in that natural evolution of events. It's a strange animal. I'm going to be careful about approaching it, especially that's the way I'm going to be approaching this particular character, being very careful. Permadeath is on. I want to be very careful. I want to survive. I want to survive. I will not interfere. One summer afternoon, your father gives you a choice of chores. What would you rather do? I'm going to go catch some fish. I want to contribute by catching something uh, to bring to the table. Your cousin has given you a very embarrassing nickname and even worse, likes to call you it in front of your friends. You have asked him to stop, but he finds it very amusing to watch you blush. What do you do? He will die where he stands. I'm going to beat up my cousin. And I'm going to tell him that if he ever calls me that nickname again, I will slit his throat. There is a lot of heated discussion at the local tavern over a group of people called telepaths. They've been hired by certain city-state kings. Rumor has it these telepaths read a person's mind and tell their lord whether a follower is telling the truth or not. You believe what? I'm not fond of the idea. I think it is, in these times it is a necessary evil. And there's going to be good and bad telepaths. There's going to be a lot of forces that can be used for good things and bad things. It's going to come down to that king and how they want to use these resources and these and these uh, these techniques. But it is most definitely necessary. Your mother sends you to the market with a list of goods to buy. After you finish, you find that by mistake, a shopkeeper has given you too much money back in exchange for one of the items. What do you do? I'm pocketing the extra money to use how I see fit, whether it be family or even anything else. But definitely pocketing the money purely off the off because I know that shopkeepers are trying to swindle and, and sell me jars of, uh, of uh, scribe jelly for thrice as much as uh, Rashid over in Balmora has ever sold scribe jelly. While in a marketplace, you witness a thief cut a purse from a noble. Even as he does so, the noble notices and calls for the city guards. In his haste to get away, the thief drops the purse near you. Surprisingly, no one seems to notice the bag of coins at your feet. What do you do? Returning it to the guard is going to give me no favor. And whatever god that I decide to go uh, and worship in this, in this playthrough, it will depend on that. But without knowing what that is, I'm going to have to say that I would sooner return it to the person than the, the guard. But if I had to return it to the guard, then I don't know if I'm going to do that. I don't trust them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'm gonna. I, I would not. I could not leave that there. I'm picking that bag up and I'm. I'm returning it. I'm returning it, but not to the guard. I'm returning it to. I'm, I'm returning it. I'm returning that to the owner. Your father sends you on a task which you loathe: cleaning the stables. On the way there, pitchfork in hand, you run into your friend from the homestead near your own. He offers to do it for you, in return for a future favor of his choosing. What do you do? I'm, he's, he can help me. That way I can see to it that it's, it's done right. So if he doesn't mess up, it looks bad on me. And we get it done faster. And I'm still getting the benefit of his help in the future with, at, with minimum to half effort on my end of the task that we're doing now. Um, and we can, you know, you know develop a, uh, a, a friendship there to help each other which could blossom in the other things. It's too beneficial. It's way too, it's way too much of a win-win. Um, so yes, I'm going to ask him to help me. I only loathe it because it takes so long. With him helping me, it's not an issue anymore. 
Your mother asks you to help fix the stove. While you're working, a very hot pipe slips its moorings and falls towards her. What do you do? I think pushing her out of the way is just as effective as positioning myself between. I mean, it could fall on both of us. I could fall on this person. I'm, I'm pushing them out of the way. Much rather than suffer a broken wrist uh, than death. And it's not not to say that, you know, she this person could still be injured but me in front of them, I think. All right. So my person, me, it also depends on how large I am. So let's say I am my size, because I think as my this red, whatever red guard I'm going to be, I, I'm going to be. All right. So if it's me, I'm probably going to position myself. But I don't know. It depends on what is a, how big is this pipe? <laughs> What kind of pipe is this? I feel like if I push her out of the way, it can, it can hit me just like if I got in front of her, it can hit me. So I feel like pushing her out of the way is better than getting in front of her because I'm a mover, removing her from the whole entire scenario by pushing her out of the way. Whereas if I just stand there and she's still there, both of I'm getting hurt in both scenarios. <laughs> Much rather them not be in one of them. So I'm pushing them out of the way. I'm pushing them hard, too. Like, they're, she's going to roll. While in town, the baker gives you a sweet roll. Delighted, you take it into an alley to enjoy. Who the fuck does that? Uh, like, some kind of squirrel. Interesting. Only to be intercepted by a gang of three other kids your age. Oh, kid. The leader demands the sweet roll, or else he and his friends will beat you and take it. <laughs> what do you do? I don't know. I like the. I, I think I would more so try to. I, I, in the moment, in the heat of the moment, just the audacity of the the ultimatum they're giving me would enrage me to want to fight. And I think I would, in, in the heat of the moment, I would be so, I think it would be a natural reaction for me personally to throw the roll on the floor and step on it and prepare to fight. Because I feel like naturally that's me saying, fuck this roll. Now I just want to fight you for thinking you could take it from me. So I'm throwing that roll. I'm stepping on it. I'm cursing at each of them. And, I, and I'm marching forward. Yeah. I'm dropping the sweet roll. And the gauntlet. Thir I can take three. Entering town, you find that you are witness to a very well-dressed man running from a crowd. He screams to you for help. The crowd behind him seems very angry. What do you do? I'm standing aside. I'm standing aside unless he's unless this person looks like they're wounded and their guts are hanging out. I'm going to slow it down, see what's going on. But he's just running. They didn't get him yet. He'll be all right. I'm standing aside. I don't know. There could be a reason they're chasing this person. If, if, if this is my town, then that's a lot of people who maybe have witnessed something. I don't know. Unless my town's full of angry mobs and they do this usually. But I, I, I doubt I doubt that uh, that this person is up to any good. So I'm, I'm, I'm standing aside. They're going to catch him. Hey, he, no one looks like they were hurt. He's not caring. He's not kidnapping anyone. I'm, I'm standing aside. I'm standing aside. Not enough information. So to tally up my responses. Between stealth, combat and magic responses. I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, five stealth, one, two, three combat, and two magic. Okay, so that looks like that puts me at Pilgrim. Pilgrim? Who would have thought Pilgrims were so stealthy? Let's see what being a Pilgrim entails. Pilgrims are travelers, seekers of truth and enlightenment. They fortify themselves for road and wilderness with arms, armor, and magic. 
and through wide experience of the world, they become shrewd in commerce and persuasion. I like that. Their specialization is stealth with personality and endurance serving as their major attributes. Okay, some perseverance. I like that. I'm excited for this for this this build. I've never been a pilgrim in any game ever and now it's really going to make sense being a, a pilgrim. I used to role play these things even still when I used to play on um, you know, Xbox on on console. Um, but I'll really be able to role play, you know, how this character is supposed to be used. Shrewd in commerce. How much you want? You want how much for that school? I should pick a god. There was a mod that I used to play in Skyrim that let you pick your your god from the beginning, which influenced how you play how you played. That wasn't in more when I'm up. I'm gonna pick a god, and I'm gonna live by those tenants. Yo, that's gonna be tight. I'm gonna pick a god. I'm gonna live by those tenants. Pilgrims are travelers, seekers of truth and enlightenment. Truth and enlightenment. They fortify themselves for the road and wilderness with arms, armor, and magic. And through wide experience of the world, they become uh, shrewd in commerce and persuasion. Their specialization is stealth with with uh, personality and endurance serving as their major attributes. All right. So it looks like my major skills are going to be. Speechcraft. Mercantile. Marksman. Restoration. And medium armor. Marksman. I'm going to be shooting people. Mercantile, speechcraft, restoration, and medium armor. Man, I'm like some kind of uh, traveling snake oil salesman. I'm going to try to sell. I'm going to just try to make. I got to try to make a living. I got to find my niche. Find a way to survive in this world and and make money off of my you know my trade. I'm gonna have to find uh something that I can pedal. And then my minor skills are illusion, hand to hand. Ooh, a little bit of hand to hand. Illusion. Okay, short blade, block, alchemy. Spells that I'll start off with: hearth heal. Actually, you know what? Let's uh all right, I'm going I'm going to read what I have and then I'm going to flavor this up a bit. Hearth heal, restore health 20 to 80 points on self. All right, what else do I get? Races, all right, races benefiting from this class. Argonian, Bosmer, Dunmer. Oh, that's a shame cuz I'm a red guard. I'm a red guard pilgrim. I'm going to find a way to make that you know, maybe I'm from, uh, you know, I'm from, um, I want to, I plan on, I, after I beat, after I beat this game with this character, I'm probably going to go to, uh, Redfall in light of, uh, the Elder Scrolls six and then, uh, go back and then go to Skyrim as this character and play that as this character, kind of like a new save plus remember you used to be able to be Sonic and, and play Sonic, uh, used to be Knuckles and be able to beat Sonic as Knuckles, and it just felt it felt real fun because you were different. I'm gonna go back to Skyrim after I beat Redfall as this character. New game plus. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to find a way to tie this Pilgrim thing with my character. Red Guard. So I'm gonna be a Red Guard. Red Guards are the athletic natives of Hammerfell. Phenomenal in weapon and armor arts. Red Guards excel at warrior-based classes. Okay, but I'm a pilgrim. But I, I, I'm a, I'm a pilgrim that I can be. I'm gonna be a rough pilgrim. I'm feeling like so far I'm gonna be a rough, shrewd businessman, almost like a, almost like a, um, like a Jabba the Hut type character. I'm thinking maybe I can become a pilgrim of the underground and smuggle through through pilgrimage, smuggle skooma through pilgrimage, pilgrimages. 
So far here, I'm getting a bonus because I'm a pilgrim and a red guard pilgrim. The significant the, the, the my skills that are going to be significantly benefited by the synergy of these two is medium armor and short blade. Which is awesome because I'm really I'm going to be really good at marksman. And as a backup, I have a short I have short blade as, as a minor skill. The way that translates into mythic. I'm going to distribute my abilities in four categories. I'm going to get one exceptional ability, two high abilities, three above average abilities, and four average abilities. Let me see here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. All right. So it's with for a total of ten. For a total of ten, my major my major skills are going to be on that upper tier. My minor skills on that lower tier. So I'm going to distribute my major skills across the higher ranks, exceptional high above that, uh, exceptional and high, and then the rest of my minor skills are going to be dispersed um, to the lower ranks above average and average. For my exceptional. For my exceptional ability, I'm going to ha- I'm going to have to make it speechcraft. I feel like that's going to be very powerful. My specialization is stealth with personality and endurance serving as my major attributes. So I am exceptional. I have exceptional speechcraft. Um, I am a, I have a great ability to negotiate by way of mercantility hand to hand combat whoo you don't see that a lot you don't ever see someone who is a business person and can defend themselves with an above average block medium armor short blade in case i gotta stab someone to finish them and then illusion marksman restoration and alchemy As I awaken, I find myself in a boat in Imperial custody. I am then escorted to the census and excise office and am being released after my character creation is complete. So I have my character created. But before I leave, I am given orders to take a coded package to Caius Casadas in town to Balmore. All right, so that, that's the next thing. So I finished my character creation in the census. So I'm currently in the census and excise office. This is a, an establishment operated by the empire in an attempt to manage census counting for tax slash excise purposes. Imperial taxes are based on head counts of citizens. Census and excise is responsible for both head counts and tax assessment and collection. Census and excise officers also administer many imperial licenses. Example, importation, mercenary company, and corporation. Okay. They are typically found in ports across Tamriel, such as Sadenine and Vanderfell. All right. So I have my character created. Very good. The letter that preceded, you mentioned you were born under a certain sign. And what would that be? So I'm going to go with the lady. Those born under the lady are kind and tolerant. Um, typically, I guess. I don't know if I need to role play that. I, I feel like that's a very, you know, it's a star sign. It's not like a god or anything. So I could I could see myself trying to be tolerant and kind and sometimes in, in some cases, but I'm not going to hold myself to that. In fact, I think I'm going to be a little bit more tarnished in terms of, um, you know, how I am. I like I like I like that word that was used shrewd. You know, I'm a sh- I'm going to be a shrewd pilgrim. OK, so I'm going to take the bonus that the lady gives me to my endurance and personality. Endurance affects my starting health amount added to my max health per level and my maximum fatigue um, and personality affects my success rate of persuasion and haggling. So personality is going to govern 
my abilities governed by personality and, and same likewise for endurance. So I'm going to see I'm going to go ahead and jot down endurance and personality bonuses. I'm going to give myself a rank shift bonus to my um, to those particular attributes. My uh, everything is going to how I'm going to approach how I'm going to how I'm going to approach attributes is all my attributes are going to be average. For the most part, everyone's going to be an average person and then everyone will have strengths. You know, there's every every NPC, every creature will be stronger in certain attributes than others. But for the most part, we are all the average Tamarellian. <laughs> um, so I'm going to say that my my bonuses will come from my sign. Uh, my sign, which in, in, in my God. Uh, when we get to that, but my sign is going to be the lady. So I'm going to give myself a uh, a bonus to. I'm going to give myself a bonus for. Personality to personality and a bonus, which is. Personality and endurance. So my personality. will get a plus two rank shift bonus making it actually no i want to leave room for growth so my bonus will bring it from average to above average i'm going to choose a god to follow and with that will come some perks hopefully and some role play uh fuel using one of my favorite basing this off of one of my favorite mods that i used to use when i played skyrim there's a mod called winter sun faiths of skyrim and it added an entire pantheon that you could choose from the beginning um, you could choose a god and that it, you are forced to role play um, certain ways to fit the god that you worship um, and you get benefits and perks from it so uh, winter sun faith of skyrim here this is created by um and I, Scion, who makes a lot of great game-changing mods for Skyrim. Using this as a base, I'm going to look for a deity that the Yokuten or, or Red Guards uh, worship, and I'm going to pick one and and hopefully get some really good perks that follow that that match my playstyle of being this kind of like mob uh, Jabba Jabba the Hut type uh, pilgrim. All right, the Yokudan Pantheon, the gods of the Red Guards aid their followers in straightforward and effective ways. While many Red Guard deities mirror the Imperial Pantheon, Red Guards also have their own unique deities that are not worshipped anywhere else in Nern. The Yokudan Pantheon does not penalize worshippers for committing crimes. So we have Leki bringing the bringing the Civil War to a conclusion, making and improved weapons. All right, don't care about the Civil War. Morwa, be married, receive the blessings of lovers, comfort, harvest the fruits of nature, eat as much as you want. You know, these are ways these are ways you would role play. I'm not bringing any wars to an end. Don't care about any civil wars. I'm not making any weapons, so I'm not going with Leki or Morwa. Satakal. Be married. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, fulfill your destiny. By saving Tamriel, strive to raise your health, absorb dragon souls. All right. I'm not going to be striving to doing any of that. Tall Papa, touch the fractures. Touch the fractures scattered around Skyrim, create enchanted items. So this is all about creating enchanted items and pursuing the arcane. No. Hoon Ding, slay your foes in open combat. No, it's not me. It's not me. Hmm. Which one is more like me? We're going to have to go with. Uh, I'm going to go with Morwa. My goal, my ultimate goal or to, to, to appease, to please my God, eventually I'll need to be married. Um, and to receive the blessing, receive to receive the blessing of the lover's comfort. Um, harvest the fruits of nature. So in order to receive the blessing of Morwa, lover's comfort. I need to uh, be married, uh, harvest the fruits of nature, and eat as much food as I want. So, so until, you know, 
Healing spells restore more health. Healer of the Sands. Praying restores health. Devotee. Fertile growth. Praying the more I blesses you with enchanted fruit that restores or fortifies an attribute. I would have to be a devotee, though. I think that's cool. That's something to work toward. I think as my faith grows stronger, um, I'll be able to get access to something like that. But I think for, for role playing aspect and pacing aspect for now, I'm going to just focus on harvesting fruits of nature and eating as much food as I want. <laughs> and eventually get married. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this more while. So I awaken. I find myself in a boat in the Imperial custody. I then am escorted to the census and excise office, which is where I am right now. I have my character created. I have my 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 skills, my abilities, how I'm going to role play with my um, with my God, my pantheon, Moha. If, if I'm pronouncing that right, let me see. How is that spelled? <clears throat> Morwa. Morwa. We'll say Morwa. 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 It'll start. It'll flow when I'm. It, it'll flow. Morwa. 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 I'll lean in. I'll lean in either direction. Morwa. Morwa. <laughs> I think I'm going to go with more while. Be married. Harvest the fruits of nature. Eat as much food as you want. Be married. I wonder how many times I can be married. They don't, no, I guess it doesn't say anything about how many wives you have, but it just says be married. Harvest the fruits of nature. Eat as much food as you want. Okay. Yo, that's some, yo, that's like some job of the hut stuff. I think I might draw inspiration from Jabba the Hutt with uh, this character who I have yet to name. And so I find myself here in the census office. See that census office? That's where I'm at. Just like I remember back in the day when I first came and walked into here and Sir Gallus or Agalagus. <laughs> What's his name? What was his name? I don't think I ever knew. I don't think I ever really knew his name as a kid playing this game. I walked in and what caught me, what caught my attention was just the, the audio. The video, the, the, the voice. Ah, yes. We've been expecting you. <laughs> my name. I got to go to the fantasy name generator for that. I, I got to go to the fantasy name generator for that. I love the fantasy name generator. I always want a reason to go to the fantasy name generator. And I always wanted to use the Elder Scrolls fantasy name generator that they specifically have for the Elder Scrolls. All right. I'm going to roll and then I'm going to go with the eighth the eighth name that comes up on this list of random red guard names that's going to be my name and i'm going to ride that name till i die i'm going to take pride in that name all right so i'm going to roll a male name <clears throat> and pick the eighth one here we go roll bow okay here we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Kellanan Garpy. Kellanan Garpy. Yo, know, that sounds really, really epic. Garpy. Garpy. You know, I got to make a name for myself. Garpy. 
And yeah, I could pronounce it as garp, but that would be wasting that well-placed E right at the end. How often do you see that? I'm, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make use of every letter of my last name. Garpy. It sounds strong. I mean, I could say garpe, but pay like no. Garpy. Kellanan, first of all, Kellanan, I sound like a Jedi. And it's Kellanan too, not Kellanan. Kellanan, you got to get it right. Kellanan, 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 yeah. Kellanan Garpy. Kellanan Garpy. Kellanan Garpy. Ooh. Kellanan Garpy. Look, Kellanan Garpy. This is the tale of Kellanan Garpy. All right, so what what am I going to be? All right, yeah, I'm a pilgrim, you know, but I'm going to flavor that a little bit. We got to flavor that a little bit. I'm a pilgrim. That's the root of my occupation concept. I can't sleep on that fact that I have access to illusion magic. It's going to be interesting finding a way to uh, make that fit into, you know, into. I I want it to look cool, right? I want it to make sense as well. I want to flavor that illusion, whatever it is, to match why. There has to be a reason why I can do that. As a, not just knowing a spell, it's going to be a reason. I'm going to, I want it to tie. I want to tie it to my character's history and growth. <clears throat> Unless it's like a scroll that I find, but something like my abilities and skills. I've. Uh, this is something I was taught. This is something that I've learned. This is something that I trained in. There's a reason I'm good at it. I wasn't just born with it. And if I was just born with it, there's got to be a reason for that. <clears throat> but anyway. All right, I'm back. I just took an hour, maybe two, step away and create a character sheet for my character. And I have to say, I am really proud of what I was able to make. I even found a really cool picture to represent my red guard, who's going to be a cutthroat pilgrim farmer. This picture is awesome. I couldn't find the person who made it. I even did a reverse image lookup, but it only comes up in compilations of um, black representation and fantasy artwork. Um, but could not find the actual artist, but it's awesome. It's a, it's not the norm. When you think of a red guard, you probably think of a sword dancing dervisher, um, skirmishing Yucatani. I don't know. That sounded like something that, that sounded like something, uh, from Hammerfell Yucatani or something, uh, bearded dude, but no, my dude looks like if Lupe fiasco was job meets job at a hut in the fantasy world a gift of gab but a criminal mastermind all right without further ado yo check yo yo Ooh. here we go look Ooh. Say that don't look like say that don't look like the game. And I don't got we don't have health and magic points and stuff, not in mythic, so that gave me some space to put my my portrait. Yo, look at my character. That's Kellanan Garby. Kellan and I'm not even gonna say I have a nickname or a uh, tat or you know because I, I hadn't made a name for myself, but I, I decided that my background is gonna be that I did a little bit of time. Um, 
I did a little bit of time and I'm now I'm back out. I've been I guess I've been taking the Morrowind and uh or Vanderfell and I'm gonna go ahead and uh you know try to make a living here. I put alignment evil but I, I should really I really mean I put evil because my character I, I'm gonna be an evil character I decided I'm gonna be an evil character and I'm gonna go out make a living and deviate from the main quest like we always do but when I do the main quest I'm gonna do it from the perspective of this character I'm gonna do it the way this character would do it if they were introduced with the things that you encounter in the main quest now I personally have not played the main quest of Morrowind in so long so it's still gonna be new to me but I'm just going to have some fun with this. So just to recap here. I decided that all characters, all NPCs are going to be average people. And then those every every NPC will have a stat that they are greater at, if not more. But that'll be rolled and determined. But the, the average person is going to have average stats across the board, with the exception of two um, major attributes. My major attribute is governed is because um, I have the lady sign. I'm under the born under the lady sign, which gives me a benefit, a bonus to personality and endurance. Personality is translated into intuition when using mythic rules. So if you look here, as you see here, my intuition stat is above average. My toughness, which is translated from endurance, translates into toughness when you're playing mythic. My toughness is above average. My major skills, I had, um, I had diced, as you know, I had diced. I gave myself exceptional high above average and average skills. Uh, one exceptional, which is speech craft, two high skills, which is mercantile and hand to hand combat above average, uh, four of these skills, block, medium armor and short blade. And then my minor skills are I'm just average at illusion, marksman, restoration and alchemy and everything else. I, I didn't even I don't even have miscellaneous skills. I'm not going to be using those at all. I'm just I'm, I'm just going to be considered not good at those. So I'm going to probably give myself a lower rank when I'm using those. Um, if I ever have to, I, 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 tr I will try to put myself in a situation where I won't have to do anything that I can't have control of. And then uh, I'm a level one red guard. My class is cutthroat pilgrim. Uh, my belief is Morwa, uh, which is be married, eat all that you want, which is why I chose a large character. And um, yeah, eat all eat all the food that you want. And uh, what was the other one? Um, be married, harvest the fruits of nature and eat as much food as you want. And I think my character has a will have a his philosophy is a weird twist on that. It's just it's a play on that. I'll twist it in an evil way. Uh, my minor skills are illusion, marksman, restoration, and alchemy. Now, that these are skills that I have on reserve. There's going to be a purpose and a reason why I have these skills when I do get these skills. But these are things that will need to be learned. I'm, I'm interpreting that every person in this world, if they didn't learn it, when they learn things academically, that, that's a that's a commitment. If they weren't born with it already, but everyone kind of is born with a latent power that they can probably tap into better. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go with that kind of logic when, when it comes to approaching these things that I learned when it comes to restoration, illusion and stuff. All right. So I'm in a census office. I give so uh, I give what's his name? Uh, Salagadius, Baladius, Sosusius, Sosusius Ergala, Mr. Ergala. He gives me my um, my papers uh, and he tells me that I need to give them to Celis Gravius before I can leave. He also seems to make mention of a uh, the whereabouts. He seems interested in the whereabouts of a missing tax collector, Processus Vitellius, and will offer medium. Uh, so he's and will offer medium training in acrobatics, light armor, and sneak. 
Okay, so he's he can train. Uh he uh okay. So I'm I'm gonna go ahead and um I'm gonna chat it up a bit with with so Sasusi is here. Um Maybe I can make maybe I can make a first friend. Okay. So using hmm. Using exceptional speechcraft first, first to pay homage to the old Morrowind. Remember, you used to have to use persuade to butter people up. Using my exceptional speechcraft, I'm gonna say something nice. I'm gonna say something nice. I'm gonna compliment his common robes and his shoes. Those, look. I know you're just trying. To, I know you're, you're you're trying to be humble, Mr. Ergadla. But. You can't hide it. You 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 look nice. You look nice. What is that? Is that sack? What is that? What is that? Hacker root cloth? Is that hacker root fiber? Huh? Using my uh, exceptional speech craft. How does he? Uh, how does he respond to that? So it's going to be my exceptional speechcraft uh, I'm going to say the difficulty of making him happy is probably you know he's he seems like an he seems like a pretty felt outgoing guy he's a little outgoing he has to greet people um and he probably doesn't receive compliments on his common robes often so I'm going to say the difficulty is probably it's probably low it's probably low my exceptional speechcraft versus low uh, am I able to really butter this? Am I really able to butter Ergala up? Yes. Yeah, I butter him up. Um. So he had mentioned uh, in our in our conversation, he had mentioned about about there was a missing tax collector named Processus Vitalis. Processus Vitellus. I say, I say, I say Professus, per, Processus Vitellus. Who? Who's that? What can he tell me? What can he tell me um, about this this missing person? That he is there anything that he knows um, that can? What what does he tell me about this missing person other than is missing? Any vital information? What can he tell me about the this missing person? That is there any information that he has that can kind of be important for me and, uh, and assist me? Ruin slash the physical. So he pretty much says that you know it can be pretty treacherous around this this area um, if he's not careful. Um, and then just his job can be a quite, it could be a physical job. It could be a physical, um, pro it could be physical. It could take a lot of physical effort tra traveling across these lands from person to person. And then think about an occasional fight that might break out or someone might try to attack you. He fears that, you know, some, some he could have been brought to ruin by way of some kind of physical altercation with the, with the, with nature or, or a person. The way I'm going to approach this is, you know, there's certain quests that were in this game that I would like to because I'm approaching them differently. I wouldn't mind the, the you know, I wouldn't mind different outcomes. So I wouldn't like I wouldn't mind the idea of potentially finding this guy. Um, finding this person and I'm just talking about maybe for side quests and, you know, not the main quest or anything, but finding maybe having a different outcome because of the way I was able to intervene. Um, but you know, not too far from the, from the original, but I, I like to think of this as a, a, again, an expansion on, on, uh, the, the confines that a video game such as Elder Scrolls Morrowind can have. Um, and when you're able to break free of that, um, with, with role playing and tabletop pr approaches, storytelling and story crafting. And that's why I think the most ultimate mul multiplayer experience for any Elder Scrolls game could be. Uh, just hiring a bunch of storytellers to 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 weave stories by dungeon mastering for large groups of people, you know, have trained, highly trained 
Elder Scrolls Dungeon Masters to weave these worlds and tell these stories that you want and just and just DM swaths of people. They create their own hero. They're themselves have some have some recognition for these heroes. Um, record these 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 virtual sessions. You know, you don't even have to be in person. Just that's not that's my idea of on online Elder Scrolls. Give it to pass the torch to me, Todd Howard. I'll take I'll oversee that. I'll oversee that. Anyway. So there is a missing tax collector that he's telling me about. OK. And he um, he tells me that he's he fears that he could have come to ruin. When was when was the last time that you've you've seen when's the last time you've you've, you've seen him? Is, is my question. That's my question. When's the last time you've seen him? Where was he last? Was it recent? When was it? Or where, where did you? Hmm. I feel like that's too big. When was the last time you've seen him? Abuse slash illusions. I like I'm going to interpret that as he was at the tavern the last time he's he's he knew where his whereabouts were. He was at the tavern to, you know, abuse illusions. You know, I'm thinking, you know, abusing alcohol, getting too drunk and then having illusions. You know? uh, that's why I think tavern. So he's, he's going to the tavern. There's a tavern in town. Oh, yeah. OK. Um, What is that tavern called? Is what I is what I ask. Ariel's trade house. All right, so I'm going to go to Ariel's trade house. I'm going to go ahead and t get my papers and I'm going to prime. First, I'm going to go to I'm sorry. What was his name again? I ask um, Sir Gavis, Sir Gravis. You want me to go talk to who again, sir? Celis Gravius, Celis Gravius. OK, I'll go and I'll, I'll go talk to Celis Gravius. So I get my. um. Your papers, please. I take my papers and I and I head to Celis Gravius and Celis Gravius is an Imperial Guard officer. He is an emissary. He is an emissary attached to the Census and Excise Office in Saint Denis and a Knight Errant of the Imperial Legion. He is the last person that I'll need to speak to before leaving the Census and Excise Office. Okay. He takes my release papers that Socius Ergala gave me. And he gives me a letter, some coin for my pocket, and a package for Caius Casadas. Caius Casadas. All right, so I say thank you, thank you. Let me let me take a look at this letter. Well, first, first, before I take a look at that letter, let's see how much gold I got. Let's see how much gold I got. I'm actually gonna I'm gonna roll to see how much gold he gave me. Uh, first, I'm going to roll potency. Well, this could be money that is owed to me or money that belonged to me, you know, that they put on my paper. So I'm going to roll to see the chances. I'm going to roll some, some. I have some questions here that I want to roll because there's a possibility I had some money to my name just because I was a farmer, you know. Farmer Pilgrim. So let me ask this. What? Is the likelihood that this is a lot of this is a, a, a significant amount for me in my scenario, in my circumstances right now? I'm not asking for a lot, but what are the chances that it's high? Probably it's I would say I would say some I would say likely. I would say likely. Yes, event block slash victory. So yes, it's a lot. It's a, it's a good amount, and 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 as he I'm um he before he hands me my sack of coin, he he blocks me from my victory in the past and the in the we, the reason I had this money my victories is why I have this much coin, and he starts he tries to block me a little bit and what how I interpret that is before he hands me the bag he says, so, probably because he knows why I was you know locked up and I guess sent to Morrowind from Hammerfell maybe I got maybe I, I escaped Hammerfell yeah or got exported or de deported from Hammerfell or something I don't know but he, before he hands me my bag of coin he says 
he starts to question, you know, well, you know, where did I get this money from? Where did I get this money from? He asked me that. Which is a very personal question, right? It's a very personal question. It's kind of making it's kind of making me feel a little uncomfortable. Okay, so um, to, to to role play here, I'm going to use my speech craft to kind of convey a message of I got my hands dirty is what I'll say, but I'll say it in a menacing way, as in like an intimidating way. Like, like, yeah, I did some dirt and what, and, and, and what are you going to do about it? Keep my money. I think not. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to use some, I'm going to intimidate, but I'm going to say something cool, something cool and edgy. Like I got my hands dirty. I'm a farmer. No, I'm going to say, I got my hands dirty to see if he takes the bait. I got my hands dirty. And if he takes the bait, I'm going to be like, I mean, like I'm a farmer. You know, I'm a, if he takes, I'm going to see if he takes the bait. <laughs> so he said, where'd you get this money from? I said, I got my hands dirty with a, uh, with a speech craft of high. With the speech craft of high. The difficulty of intimidating him, I would say, is probably uh, from my from my from where I am in life. The difficulty is probably going to be high. Yeah, to be honest with you. I'm not that much of a badass, but he's never met me in person, so I'm kind of hoping. I'm actually I think I. I think I look pretty intimidating, honestly, but I'm unarmed, but I have I look like I can beat you up. My hand to hand skill is high enough. Maybe I kind of give off an aura. So I'm going to say maybe that gives me a bonus of one. I look intimidating and this is his first time seeing me. I'm a big dude With emphasis on my the way my character looks. Look at my look at me. Look at me. Brolic. So I'm going to give me a bonus of one. And I, with an intimidation skill, with an intimidation attempt and more so saying it cool, but to intimidate him, I got my hands dirty. And what? Does it work? And he thinks he got me, right? Does he fall for the bait? Does he fall for the bait being an all he's an officer, right? Did I just admit to a crime? Very likely. Very likely. This guy. Very likely. Did he fall for the bait? And then I say, with the speech craft of high, because I got him off balance now. I think I think I got him off I got him off balance now. I'm about to hit him. With the, with the speech craft of high, I say, because I'm a farmer. Farming is lucrative. Farming is lucrative. With the speech craft to kind of chill, kind of calm them down. Like farming is lucrative. De escalate. Farming is lucrative. But got them, get them going a little bit, but just to and then bring them up and then, and then de escalate them. Bring them up, de escalate them. Okay. Bring them up. De-escalate him. Kellanan get Garpy. Alright. Does it work? I'm gonna say the difficulty is below average. Is it, this is this is a slam dunk. I'm a farmer. He has to buy it. He can look at the papers and it says farmer on the papers. I'm a farmer. That's what I mean. Does it work? Of course it works. Yeah, calm down. What's he do? What's he do? Release slash intrigues. He releases the bag of coins <laughs> and he looks intrigued by me. He looks intrigued 
by by me. He want like he's going to keep his eye on me. Is that what he says? Very likely. Yes. There I am. Keep an eye on you. Keep an eye on you. Be good to hear and say to Neen. Be good to hear. Be good here and say to Neen is what he says. I said, yeah, all right. yeah. Give me my money. All right. Let me see what this. Let me see what this letter says. Let me read this. Let me read this soggy ass letter. You have been given these directions and a package of documents. Do not show them to anyone. Do not attempt to read the documents in the package. The package has been sealed and your tampering will be discovered and punished. Follow these directions. Proceed to the town of Balmora in Vanderfell district. Report to a man named Caius Casadas. He will be your superior and patron. You will follow his orders. His residence is not known, but ask at the corner club called South Wall. People there will know where to find Caius Casadas. When you report to Caius Casadas, deliver the package of documents to him and wait for further orders. Remember, you owe your life and freedom to the emperor. Mm, right. The emperor is why I was able to be free. Serve him well and you will be rewarded. Betray him and you will suffer the fate of all traitors. You have the honor to prepare this at the direction of his most sovereign majesty, the emperor, the emperor Uriel Septim. Glabrio Bellinius, Bellianus, personal secretary to the emperor. So proceed to the town of Balmora and Vanderfell. The town of Balmora and Vanderfell. His residence is not known, but asked at the corner club called Southwall. People there will know where to find him. Southwall, Southwall and Balmora. Okay. I don't count my money in front of him. I wait till I leave. I wait till I leave. I wait till I step out. I count my money because I don't want to look, you know, I don't want him to see me count my pockets. He's already counting my pockets. So do I have any belongings? Do I have any belongings? I'm going to ask. Does he give me any belongings? I'm going to say the chances of that are unlikely. Any any old belongings? Definitely none. All right. Let's see how much bread he get. How, how much? How much uh, gold did I get? Oh, and the, and the answer to the question was yes. It, it's a significant amount. So I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna roll six d one hundreds. Six d one hundreds. Here we go. Two hundred and eighty nine gold. I'm not going to head to Balmora today. I'm going to get my I'm going to I'm going to get a foothold here in Sedanin for a bit. I'm going to spend at least I'm going to spend at least a couple weeks here in Sedanin establishing a network. That's one thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to live here in Sedanin. They're on my they they're on my uh clock. If they want if they want to come and hurry me up, they'll send someone to come hurry me up. But you can't expect me to just come into the world and uh, come running to you. But, you know, I think two weeks, they can wait two more weeks. Let me get let me get established. I'm that type of person. They know that. They know that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to head to Arville's trade house. All right. So I step out and I step out. Is it uh? It's daytime. We'll say it's daytime. Um, do I see Arville Trade House? Uh, I'm, I'm going to head straight to Arville's Trade House. I'm going to head straight there. Do I have any issues? Uh, does anything stop me? Do I have any? Do I encounter anything or have anything? Do I encounter anything of significance um, between here and 
Arville's trade house. I'm going to say... I'm going to say... Uh, unlikely. Unlikely. It's unlikely that I'll en encounter anything that's, that slows me down or stops me. Yes, I, I encounter nothing. So I get to Arville. I get to Arville's trade house. Arville is his name. I want to make sure I get his name right before I go in there. I don't want to, you know, I don't want that. to. That would be a really bad first impression to ruin this man's name upon meeting him. So I'm going to step into uh, Arville's trade house because apparently this is where the last time that dude was left. But you know what? That's not my first priority. My first priority, because I'm, you know, the type of man that I am. I want some food and I got some bread. I want some food. I want some drink. And, uh, you know, maybe meet some people here. So I step into our reals trade house. Hopefully I can find everything that I want uh, in here. Okay, so I step into Arl's trade house. First off, is it crowded? Is it is it is it crowded in here? Do I hear a lot of people? I'm gonna say uh, it's Satanine. It doesn't seem too populated. Step into Arl's trade house. Is it is it crowded? I'm gonna say unlikely. You know, I don't I don't think Satanine is uh. I mean, it's the middle of the day. Let's say 50-50. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hustling. It's bustling. It's hustling and bustling. Okay. Okay. Aurel's Trade House is the only shop in Sedanine located by the bridge in the center of town. Aurel and his guests provide all the services that are available in town, save for transport. I walk in. And I, uh, I'm just gonna head straight to Aril. Just gonna say I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk up. I'm gonna approach Aril with a uh, very, with a very um, positive greeting, with the speechcraft of high. Or I'm sorry, exceptional. This should be. He's a, he's a, you know, he greets people. This should be fairly easy to do. Well, he's he's a high elf too. I look like a commoner. I'll say this is average difficulty. I'll say it's average difficulty. It might be a little, it might be pompous. I don't know. We're about to find out. I never had to experience RL's personality before, but that's why this is going to be awesome. Is RL an asshole? Exceptional versus average. Am I able to butter him up with a nice explosive greeting? Yes. Greetings to you, Red Guard. Yo, I'm telling you, Speechcraft. It was one of it's one of the greatest abilities. So I greet him. He says, "Welcome to RL's Trade House. I'm RL, publican and proprietor. Don't take what doesn't belong to you. You're a new face here. If you want to buy from me, you have to barter. If you want a little advice, free to newcomers, just ask. Would you like to hear about your about our most popular potions?" Or most popular scrolls. I barter for goods or coin. I also have a small selection of spells for sale. No credit. You want a little advice that's free? That's all that's free. Would you like to hear about our most popular potions? Our most popular scrolls? Okay. So he's, you know, straight to business. I can respect that. I'll ask for a little advice. Yeah, I'll take some advice. I'll politely ask for some advice while also conveying that I respect his business acumen. With the speech craft of Hawkwood. Exceptional again. I want to say the difficulty is probably still average. Am I able to execute that? Yes. So, what's the advice that he wants to give? For me, that's free. If you need directions, talk to our local scout alone. Elone, the Red Guard. 
She's here in the trade house somewhere, and you might want a copy of Guide to Vanderfell. I think I still have a copy for sale. Okay. Okay, I, you know what? I just might buy that. I will buy that. I will buy that. Give me a second here. Let me take notes. Her name was old Elone. She's a scout. Give me some information. Okay, Elone. You know, that sounds like a red guard name. Hopefully she's a red guard. I'm looking to get married, I'm looking for my wife. But uh, for that advice, just to show you that I respect the hustle, I'm gonna flip them. I'm gonna flip them. Uh, I'm gonna flip them five gold, and I'm gonna buy. How much you want? How much does he want for this Vanderfell? That's another thing. I'm I'm bartering. I'm a barter. We gonna barter. All right. What's my mercantile? These are my barter rules. What's my mercantile? My mercantile is, uh, where is it? Oh, there you go. Yo, I found the, the exact font too when I built this. Anyway, hi. All right. How much, how much does he want for the guide to Vanderfell? I'm gonna flip him that. I'm gonna flip him five gold. I'm gonna flip him five gold with a speech craft. With a speech craft of uh of high flipping five gold and say, I respect the hustle. I think I'm starting to butter them up, and I, I think it's gonna be easy to flip to send anyone a coin. That should this should be easy. He won't take it as disrespect. He might depend. So I, I'm gonna leave it at average just in case he does take it as disrespect. Does I do I execute the the, the buttering up flipping the coin? For his uh, his good advice. Yeah. Yeah. Also, how much how much does he want? I'll buy it for I'll buy it for another five gold. That's that's what I'm, I'm that's the price I'm going to name. I'll buy it for another five gold. Does he uh, does he accept that? My mercantile of high versus his mercantile of. He's probably high too. He runs a trade house. It has to be high. I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, give my. I'm not gonna give myself a bonus for giving him that gold. That was courtesy. That's, that's, I don't think that's enough to sway him. He didn't ask for that. But it was respectful. I'm gonna give myself a, a one rank shift bonus just because of how how I've been buttering him up. Just because of how I've been buttering him up, I'm gonna give myself a rank shift bonus of one. I'm gonna, I, I'm, I'll, I'll take that guy to Vanderfell for five gold. Does he accept? Let me clear this out. Exceptional, no. He said what? I try to de-escalate it a little bit. Does it, you know, since he is, is he flipping out? That doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean he's flipping out, right? So is he flipping out 50, 50? This is how we're going to determine if he's, if, if he's an asshole or not. Is he, is RL flipping out? Because I maybe have disrespected him with that offer of five gold for the guide. It's a guide. It's a book. Does he flip out? Exceptional, yes. You're trying my patience, Redguard. Is it because he just thinks it's more, worth more? Very likely. Yeah. All right, I tried to de-escalate it a bit with the speech craft of high. The difficulty of this is probably going to be above average. I say, all right, all right. Let me see this book. Let me, you know, maybe I didn't see the book. I thought it was maybe, you know, a little pamphlet or something. Maybe, let me, let me see what it looks like to de-escalate it. Does that work? No. Oh. And he pulls out the book and he shows me the guide. And the guide, does it look really nice? Am I Was I underestimating the, the how great the Vanderf the guide to Vanderfield looks? Because, <laughs> you know, I play, I've only played more when I never have actually seen, the, I've never held the book in my hands like I get to now. Is this guide to Vanderfell just worth so much more? Is it, does it look great? Very likely. Yeah. Okay. How much does he want for it? More than a hundred? 
50-50. Let me clear this out. 50-50. More than a, more than more than 200? 50 50. 150? Very likely. Alright. So I say I'll give it to him for 100. With the, with the mercantile of high versus his mercantile. Is he set? That's half. That's almost half of what I had. So, I take it just to establish some sort of business relationship with this person. I take it. Now I'm expecting this to be very helpful. In fact, I should be able to look to this guide to help cover any gaps. If I run into any issues, I should be able to refer to this. So I'm going to be able to whenever I if I have a, if I have a question about anything pertaining to Vanderfell and its locales, this is like an item that is the equivalent of having a history, uh, like I guess a history slash navigation feat skill knowledge check or what have you. And I'm going to roll to see if that information, if I can find any information in the book to help me. So yeah, it's probably it's I, I would say it's worth a hundred. Okay, so I buy the book. I have one. I have uh, one hundred eighty nine gold left. I'm gonna get some food. Gonna need a knife. Food, knife, and some nice clothes. Yeah. So let's start with. We'll start with food. We'll start with some clothes. Does Ariel have any clothes? I'm going to say, you know, clothes for sale. I'm going to say, uh, and here, and you know, the, uh, the my, my goal, my current goal right now is to buy clothes and a knife and still have enough money for a good meal left. That's all I want. That meal. So I have to make sure that I can have enough for that meal. Are there any clothes? Does Ariel have any nice clothes? I'm going to say very likely. Yes. The finest clothing awaits you. Does he have anything that looks nice to my tastes for 50? I'm going to say very unlikely. I'm going to say unlikely. Yes. Do I have options? Unlikely. Yes. Okay. Okay, I'm going to roll the d6 to see. Uh, is, is a lot of options? There's a lot of options. Unlikely. No, options, but not a lot of options. Okay, so it's about three. Okay. I say I want to, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take, is there anything that, that that's really, that's really, 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 it's just nice. It's perfect. Clo it, it looks close to what I, whatever I end up with is going to look like what I have in this picture here. That's what we'll say. Okay. But the difference is, the question I'm asking is I want it for 25. No. Uh, I say I'll take that for 45 with the mercantile uh with I'll take it for I'll take it for 25. With the mercantile of high versus his mercantile of high, am I able to uh get him to 25? Probably not. Difficulty I'm going to raise to exceptional because that's significantly lower than what he's selling it for. Am I able to get, am I able to execute on that offer? What's he say? So whatever 
I, you know, I say something along the lines of like, look, that's a nice sweater right there. And I see it's made of this. And, uh, uh, and after our, our, our uh, conversation and transaction that we just had, I make mention to that. And, uh, and I say, hey, let me get that for 25 because I'm also going to grab that knife. But let me get that. Let me get that for 25. And he accepts. So I got to I'll say this is a common. This is no, I'm not, this is not a common rule. This is a very nice robe, like you said. This is a very nice common robe. I'll write that down. <laughs> very nice common robe. Very nice common robe. All right. I want a knife. I want a nice, sharp knife. Does he have any nice, sharp knives for sale? If he's supposed to have everything, right? He's got to have a knife. Very, very likely. Very likely. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get a knife for 25. I'll take that knife for 25. Does he give it to me for 25? High versus high. <laughs> no. Come on, Ariel. Come on, Ariel. How much do you want it for? Significantly higher? 50 50. No. Well, you want it for you want it for 50? Very likely. Exceptional, yes. Alright. I give it to him for I'll take it for 50. So that's, that's 50 for a knife. 50 for a knife. I don't want there to be any bad relation, no, any, no bad business blood between me and Aurel. I'm going to be living in Sedanine for two weeks. I'm planning on making a lot of trades and transactions with this person. This is a trade house. I need the owner of the trade house to, to be in good standing with me. All right, 114 gold. I'll hold on to that for now, but... I have, a, I have my dagger, I have my nice common robe that I throw on right now. I tuck my iron dagger away, my Vanderfell guide, and my robe pocket. Matter of fact, does he have any bags? Very likely. Yeah. I'll take that bag, that, that satchel right there for uh, 14 gold. Does he accept? I mean, I just bought a lot. I'm going to say the difficulty is not high, but it's going to be above average. I don't think he's going to come down too low or let up too much, but he can throw in the satchel. High versus above average. Come on, Arrow. This is another opportunity to show that you're, you're cool, man. Come on, come on. Does he take it? My man. My prices are the best. My man. All right, so I, I I put the satchel. I mean, I put the the Vanderfell guide into my new bag. Put the bag around my my back, or or arm or waist, whatever. I have robes on, however they used to wear them. And I look around. Um, anyone? Do I see anyone of uh? Do I see alone down here? Fifty fifty. No. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend some time down here and just kind of socializing and loitering and looking around. Um, but my goal is to more so greet everyone down here. Um, greet everyone down here. Um, I'm also going to let me say speechcraft, mercantile, hand to hand. Block, medium, armor, short blade, illusion, marksman, restoration. Okay. So I'm going to use my speech craft to greet people, befriend the public uh, in the trade house. No one specifically, no one special, just the general people down here. Um, and then uh, com combine that with mercantile 
to discuss trade and prices and values and bargains since we're in a trade house. That's one thing we probably have in common. Like, hey, yeah, you should probably you could probably talk him down to this because of this and that. It looks like this. The values, this and that, you know, stuff like that. So with a combined speech craft and mercantile. So that's going to be. I'm going to take the highest, which is exceptional for my for my speech craft. I'm going to give it a plus two. I'll give it a plus one for it for the support of um, my mercantile. I'm going to say the difficulty of that is not difficult at all. I'm going to say it's average. How successful am I at executing this sort of performance of spending a quarter of the day just get, getting to know people and getting established with just the people down here? Half of the trade house, just for about an hour. How successful? How successful? Exceptional versus average. Am I able to do it? Kellen and Garby. Yes. Exceptional. Yes. Okay. In, in my conversations in passing, did anyone have anything worth trading on themselves outside of RL? I want to say, I want to say likely. Exceptional, yes. With such a successful use of my time, was I able to strike a bargain with any of these people? With the mercantile of high? With the plus one bonus of just the situational bonus that I'm getting from just from just such a great role. I'm going to actually say plus two because that was an exceptional yes. I'm actually going to say plus three. Was I able to get something something uh, significant out of this out of this uh, these exchanges? Yes. So I was able to barter and get something significant. Okay. All right. So what exactly uh, was I, what significant thing was I able to get from these, this social exchange that occurred in this trade house and whatever it is, I'm going to, going to, I'm going to give it a rank shift bonus of one to, to, for its potency, which means it's, it's value, whatever it is, the higher it is, the, the higher its value would be. And this is something that's significant. This is essentially a reward for that bomb roll that I just got. So um, what exactly was I able to get from this exchange? As a matter of fact, was it more than one? Was it more than one? Yeah, that's right. Was it more than one? 50-50. Yes. Was it more than two? Very unlikely. It was more than two. I made out like a bandit. I'm going to roll a treasure. I'm going to roll. I'm going to roll. I'm going to roll. I'm going to roll four. I'm going to roll four things. And I'm going to. Leave myself with just enough to get my meal. 100. I have 100 gold. I'm going to say this is going to bring me all the way down to. Uh, I, I'm going to say 50. And I'm going to spend another 25 on, 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 on a really, really great meal is the plan. And then I'm going to roll that meal. I'm going to roll that meal. I'm going to roll four things. These are the things that I was able to get. I might take these and flip them. Blacksmith tools. There we go. Some blacksmith tools. Okay. A hood. Okay. Here we go. Let's get it. Nice little hood. Some clothing. I might keep that. A tower shield, definitely flipping that. And clothing—is this really nice? Clo is it really nice? Clo Describe what does clothing look like? Is it really nice? Very likely. Yes. What's it look like? Politely feminine. Okay, so it's a dress or something uh, female. I will be selling that as well. It's a nice 
article of clothing that will be getting sold to RL. All right, I have 50 gold left. I'm gonna head back to RL. Gonna find get some food after I sell this stuff, and then get a bed for for the night. And then I'm gonna decide whether or not I want to attend uh, the the festivities that are gonna happen in the bar in an RL trading house tonight, or focus my efforts on searching for that missing person because as time goes on you know the more time that goes on the more likely that person is going to turn up dead so if i really care about it i need to get on it and that's more so i'm looking this is not more so for that person's sake i'm doing this to um establish a connection establish a business relationship with us uh, ergala ergalo uh at the census office because this is a port town and if i'm going to achieve this criminal empire i need to be able to have friends at these port towns and, and get them in my pocket so the goal is do i want to spend the night learn socializing and meeting people which is beneficial at, at tonight's festivities festivities or do i want to spend that time um trying to find that dead person <laughs> um so here we go i'm here back at rl my chance was he was he watching me just you know did he notice me bringing wholesomeness to his trade house i'm going to say very likely yes and he's delighted what does he say arrive slash a representative oh so i take this as he was He's happy that finally someone like him arrived to his establishment that represents that old fashioned trading spirit. He, he likes he likes that he sees he's watching and um, he's 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 already invited me into the fold of his of his trade house. You're in good company, friend. And with a high with a exceptional speech craft, I'm going to capitalize on that compliment and say something nice back to him. With an exceptional, this should be easy. Versus below average, am I successful? Yes. So I say, man, all real. Come on, man. Of course. And we and, and, we, and we talk and I and I throw some mercantile flair out there. I say some talk about trading and give them some. I share some trade techniques. I share a trade technique. Sure. I'm not going to give them a big secret. I give them a nice little trade technique. Like here, you had that. How does he, how does he like that? Does he, is he ecstatic about that? I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say likely. Was he, was he pleased by that technique? Was, did it blow his mind? I'm going to say likely because my mercantile is high. My speech craft is exceptional. I give him a, I give him a, I give him an average technique. Does it blow his mind? I'm going to say likely. Nah. <laughs> it didn't blow his mind but he, he, oh that's, I never thought of it that way type of thing like, oh, so yeah. yeah that's interesting I never thought of it that type, that way I'll keep that in mind not that I would ever trade you know I would never do the, you know he had some critiques but you know it's, mer it's tra talk, trader talk merchant talk I didn't give him the sauce I didn't give him the sauce though But me and him are we're pretty even when it comes to the mercantility, the mercantile skill. Let me ask this: like, I, I think it's this. We're, we're we're friends at this point, right? He would consider me a friend, I would think. I'm not even gonna ask the game that yet. I'm gonna let him marinate. But I have some things that I want to trade. What is he going to give me? For these blacksmith tools. Let me see. How much are these blacksmith tools worth? I'm gonna roll potency. More. Okay. I want I wanna I'll I'll trade these to him. I'll give them to him for um for a hundred. For a hundred. So I Mercantile. I'm going to give myself a plus one because this is my boy. Actually, no, I'm going to subtract the difficulty 
with a minus one to him. Oh, to the difficult. Actually, no, uh, I'm gonna give me a plus one. Versus his high. I say a hundred. Not even gonna raise a difficulty or the hundred is where it's it was what it's worth. The game just told me that, so I'm gonna say high versus high. Am I able to give it get it for a hundred? Nah. We'll see one in for 75. Likely. Yes. Random event. Thread slash escalates. Thread slash escalates. Judge slash attention. Judge slash attention. He starts. He he. He notices something about the tools and that gets his attention. He starts to judge it and he's very passionate about it. Um, which is why, you know, he's saying he wants it for actually he says he says he says 50 because he just notices it, and that's when it escalated. So he said now he's saying 50. Do I accept that? With a high. Versus his high, I am not going to accept that. I'm going to say 75. No lower. Does that work? Despite I see what he's pointing out. Matter of fact, I'm going to try to I'm going to try to use my speech craft to talk that away with an exceptional speech craft. I say, you know, but that's that's that more whether you don't want perfect tools. You don't want perfect tools. <laughs> Some bullshit like that with a, with an exceptional versus uh, uh, his mercantile of high. Am I able to talk him? Yeah. Yeah, and I say 75, no less, with a high and a plus one because I just talked him off. No less. Does it work? No. He says 50. I don't want to ruin this. I will give it to him for 50. Sold to Ariel for 50. So I sell these for 50. So I already recouped the money back that I got for spending in uh, that hour of trading with people. The hood I'm keeping. This is a nice, cool hood. How would this? What, what's what's up with this hood? What does it look like? Carefully slash enormous. It's a nice, droopy, ominous hood. I'm gonna say it gives me a plus one rank shift to intimidation. <laughs> And uh, this tower shield. Oh, yeah. The, oh, yeah. Now, I'm not going to roll potency on this. I'm going to roll potency just at a glance. I'm not an artificer or anything. I'm not appraising this. This is just at a glance. But I look at it, and it, to me, it looks like it, can, it is. All right, so more. So that's above the baseline average. It, it, looks, it looks like it's in pretty decent shape. This is a tower shield. Man, look, I'll sell this to you for 300. No, no, matter of fact, for you, 200. 200. 200 with a high versus his high. I'm going to say the difficulty for this is exceptional because he's probably he's got a lot less money now. So with a high versus his exceptional mercen, his, his skill, um, I'm going to say high versus high, but I'm going to. Uh, give me a minus one because it's just a little harder. Am I able to sell this this tower shield for two hundred to him? Yes. He buys it. It's a nice shield. It's a nice shield. He probably sold that and got his money back to the person that I had just bought it from. All right, there's two hundred, and then uh, I have this really really nice piece of clothing here. Last but not least, a nice piece of clothing here. At a glance, I would say it's it's less less below average. I give it to him. I give it to him. As a matter of fact, using speechcraft, I ask him, "Do you have any like younger rel? Do you have any like younger female uh, siblings, relatives, or children, or whatever?" With a speech craft of um, with 
Egypt exceptional. I'm going to say the difficulty of just being kind is, is not difficult at all. Yes. So um, I asked him, I said, you know, is, do, you, do you? Does he? 50-50. Nah. I say, well, look, if you, you know, here, maybe... Maybe gift this to someone. Does he take it? Very likely. Yeah, he takes it. He takes it. All right. I want his most expensive. I mean, I'm going to roll some. I'm going to roll to see what he has on what he has for food. I'm going to roll in the fantasy food name generator. It's not Morrowind lore. It's not Elder Scrolls lore, but. I'm going to, it is now. I'm going to take the bottom three of what I roll here. And we have Sherif Bonbons, Ruferula Cake, and Jormengander Krispies. Straight from Skyrim. <laughs> I'm gonna get that Raffarula cake. That's that's from uh that's from Hammerfell. That's from that's some Hammerfell food right there. I'm gonna take that. Uh I'll take it. What's it, 25? Very likely. 25? Yeah. Take it for 20. Mercantile of high. Does he accept? No, he says 25, right? He says 25. Yeah, introduce an NPC. Transform slash legal matters. This character is not connected to this plot line. Okay. Ferociously simple. So some kind of hunter kind of barges in line. Some kind of dull hunter. And they're really mad and they are threatening. I, I, I want to say some sort of they're threatening to call the guards, uh, maybe because of something that they purchased or some kind of business that, that maybe has, have gone has gone wrong with our real. And they're threatening him. Really aggressive. Is that is that what's happening? I'm going to say uh, very likely. Yeah, all I ask for is a pair of boots. How hard could it be? Does your owner know you're off your leash? And with the speech craft and slash intimidation of ex of, of uh, exceptional, the bonus of one because of my ominous hood, speech craft of exceptional. I tell this person to step back and wait their turn. And if and if they don't uh, and if they don't. They're going to wish they did. I stare them in the eye. Exceptional plus one. They're ferocious, right? So I'm going to say they're probably uh, going to be an above average. It's going to be an above average difficulty. Does it work? Yes. What do they do? Persecute slash competition. So they pretty much they do back down, but they they tell Ariel that you know X and Y Z trade house is so much better, and they're taking their business to them. Do they leave or do they wait? Do they leave? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say uh, likely. Yeah, they storm out. Aye. All right, so I buy my referula cake. What does RL say? Waste slash tension. He doesn't waste his time with that and continues to the business transaction. I take my referula cake. Uh, what do you say? 425? He, does he give it to me on the house after that altercation? 
I'm gonna say likely. Yeah. He says, yeah, take the referral cake. I mean, take the cake. Take the cake. I'll take the cake. All right. All right. So time, you know, the evening passes. The evening is coming and more people are starting to come into the trade house. And I have to decide, do I want to stay here and, um, you know, socialize, meet the people of Sedanine? Uh, or do I want to focus all of my efforts on um, looking for the missing person? And yeah, I could do both, but then I wouldn't be able to do a poll. So the poll, the viewer poll, the audience poll, I'm going to put a poll at the end of this video. And if you want, if you think I should spend the night socializing, getting to know the people of Satanine, vote for that. If you think I should dive headfirst into um, searching for this person, put all my efforts into that, it's wasting no time because time is a matter, is a factor right now, uh, then vote for that. But that's going to conclude um, my coming into Satanine for the first time. And already. You know, my this is the most this is the deepest interaction I've ever had with RL and RL's trade house, and I'm only at the front counter of this one building. That's all I'm gonna say. See you on the next one.